Hey everyone, my name is Paul John and this is John Maybe. Hi there. And we are here to answer some of your questions from the Hippo Mailbag. So let's take a look. Oh, this is from the Hippo EM board review site. We're going to go over practice question. You want to get it started? Sure. So the first item is, a 77-year-old female is brought in by ambulance for a syncable episode today in the kitchen, witnessed by her daughter. Her past medical history includes hypertension and recently diagnosed pneumonia. She takes hydrochlorothiazide regularly and is almost finished with her levofloxacin. Vital signs are BP 131 over 78, pulse 72, respiratory rate 16, O2 sat 98% on room air, temperature is 98.4. The patient reports feeling palpitations and lightheadedness immediately before losing consciousness. Currently, the patient denies chest pain, fever, shortness of breath, vomiting, or abdominal pain. ECG is shown. What should be the next step in management of this patient? All right, so before we take a look at the EKG, let's go through the question itself. And there are a couple of red flags. She's 77 years old, and she has a history of hypertension, taking hydrochlorothiazide, and was recently diagnosed with pneumonia. And so she is taking a new medication, levofloxacin. Right now, her vital signs are within normal limits, and she's asymptomatic. But it is really concerning that she reported feeling palpitations and lightheadedness right before passing out and having a syncopal event. So let's take a look at the EKG. The rate is about 75. The rhythm is sinus when you look at this rhythm strip, and uh, the axis is normal. The intervals, the PR is not prolonged. The QRS is tight. The QT is prolonged. So remember the poor layman's test, which is you take the R to R interval and cut that in half, and that's the point at which the T wave really should have normalized back to baseline. But in this case, it looks like it is beyond that. So it looks like a prolonged QT, which is a red flag in this case because of the palpitations, lightheadedness right prior to the syncopal event, which suggests prolonged QT, R on T phenomenon, leading to VTAC, right? And so mm -hmm. uh, just to take a quick look at the question again, uh, what is the next best step in the management of this patient? Let's go through the answer choices. Yeah, let's take a look at the answers. So the first one is calcium gluconate. So calcium gluconate, typically for the board review, or for the board exam, I should say, calcium gluconate is the answer for hyperkalemia and widening of the QRS. So in this case, not the right answer choice. Okay. How about uh, magnesium sulfate? So for a prolonged QT, that is one of the answer choices that you can give. Let's look, take a look at the next one. Okay. Sodium bicarbonate? Sodium bicarbonate, again, classically for the exams, you are thinking about administering that for, for instance, TCA overdoses where you have the AVR knuckling, widen QRS. Mm -hmm. And the last one is transvenous pacing. So transvenous pacing, this person is asymptomatic. The vital signs are within normal limits. It is not uh, symptomatic bradycardia at this point. All right. Sounds good. So All right. The answer is? The answer is magnesium sulfate, and that's going to be your answer choice. And that wraps it up for this segment of Hippo Mailbag. Stay tuned until next time when we answer more of your questions. See you.